Good afternoon, everyone. Polar stratospheric clouds, rare and unusual forming over the UK. There's two types of these clouds, type one and two. The type that was seen over the UK, type two, forms in temperatures of minus 85 C in the stratosphere. Nacreous clouds have been sighted across the UK occasionally over the last 140 years. Additionally, the southern hemisphere, noctilucent clouds behaving strangely this year. Denmark Meteorological Institute forgetting to put the 1999 heat spike in, giving a completely false reading on their graph. Contrary to observed satellite measurements from the remote sensing system and University of Alabama Huntsville measurements. Why would they do that? And these clouds are also related to incredibly cold conditions. Start you here with the Denmark Meteorological Institute, otherwise known as DMI. Notice how there is no 1999 heat spike on their graph. This is completely misleading. University of Alabama Huntsville shows the Pinatubo cooling as well as the El Nino warming. Somehow DMI forgot it. Double checking into remote sensing systems, they show the same spike. DMI, how can you not get this correct? Pushing forward 18 years and 10 months now, there's been no global warming. As you can see, that 0.04 C climb in temperature has never eclipsed anything since 1999. So all these news stories you see about 2015, warmest year ever, are completely misleading to continue with the global warming agenda. Unusual polar stratospheric clouds appearing over the UK. Really beautiful mother of pearl in the sky. I would love to see this in person. Polar stratospheric clouds, there are two types. Type 1 has sort of the orange tinge to it. It forms in temperatures of 75 to 79 below zero Celsius. Type 2, which was spotted across the UK, forms in temperatures around 85 below zero Celsius in the stratosphere. A wide out on the type 1 so you can see the difference of the orange compared to the type two here that forms around 80,000 feet. Now the reason they're able to be visible after dusk is because those clouds are so high that the light is bouncing off ice covered areas in the Arctic illuminating the bottoms of the clouds. But this time these clouds are so far south and going through the research, a lot of it's formed when air currents are passing over mountains but a majority of the research focuses only on Antarctica because that's where these clouds are so often seen, not in the Northern Hemisphere. So different graphic here for you to take a look at the difference in the two types of clouds. The UK has experienced these in 1996 as well as 2000. Quick view for you here so you can visually see what the clouds looked like at that time. Barely visible, just at the edge of the rainbow effect. Taking a look at 140 years of data here on the clouds, you can see they only occur rarely and usually in bunches around the years. The last time they were seen around Edinburgh, 2012, we have them occurring again this year. This is the 1999 visual for you. This is normally what's seen in Antarctica, this type of really incredibly intense polar stratospheric clouds. Just focus quickly on the density and the amount of sky coverage on this one in Antarctica. And this is what was seen over the UK five days ago. More shots from Edinburgh. Much, much, much more intense than it was in 1999. Exponentially more intense. Jumping around the social media. We'll come to a few different images here likely to be some of the most beautiful things that you've ever seen in the sky, except for those iridescent blue noctilucent clouds, which interestingly enough in the Southern Hemisphere have decreased and are showing unusual activity this year as well. If you wanna see some more spellbinding, mesmerizing photos of our Earth's cloud system, jump over to spaceclouds.info. They have such nuggets there as sodium, atoms in the mesosphere, 
images of noctilucent clouds from the International Space Station. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. These clouds are rare. Don't know why they're forming currently. It takes unusually cold conditions and they're associated with Arctic or Antarctic with Antarctic having 80% of the sightings. But how the clouds are so far south this year just goes right in with all the forecasts for the grand solar minimum decreases in our Earth's magnetosphere that cause polar jet stream anomalies. And then suddenly, bam, here are these clouds. I think it's all related together somehow.